Hey guys, welcome back to the only series out there which combines the stories of Magic the Gathering with the physical cards you can win. I'm Sybin and this is Friday Night Lore. For this Friday Night Lore, I figured I'd go over a special topic. Magic Origins is on the horizon, and with it we're getting new origin stories for some of our favorite Planeswalkers. This week, Wizards unveiled its new story for Jace Balleron, and since Jace was my first ever Magic Lore topic, I figured it'll be cool to make him the topic of this FNL. Like I said, I've already covered his story before, so you can check out his old lore here or linked in the description below. For now, let's get right into the new origin of Jace Balleron, the Mind Mage. Jace was born to a poor mining family on the plain of Vern. Very little is actually known about Vern. It seems to be a world powered by mana and locked in an eternal civil war. Vern is a world in which mana is used by mages but obtained through hard labor by mana miners, such as Jace's father, Gaze Balaron. Jace has had a troubled past, living in one of the poorest mana ring areas known as Slimmot's Crossing. Mana rings are used to transport the physical essence of mana throughout the plane. Their home is a small, horribly damaged and run-down apartment right above the mana ring itself. It's not a place anyone would like to call home, but it's what they could afford. One day, Jace was taking a particularly difficult exam at school. He was never an overly bright kid, but he studied hard and truly believed he was prepared for this test. Yet, at the first question, he was stuck. The answers escaped him. As he struggled, the answers sorta of just came to his mind. Everything was right there. The answers, the formulas, he even showed his work. He was prepared for the test, but the problem was, it was a test he and the other students were meant to fail. They were trick questions. Apparently, Jace knew well more than what was offered in that class, and his teachers assumed he cheated somehow. Deservingly so. The school sent a notice in the form of an allusion to his parents, easily reaching them before he returned home. His father, who was a man hardened by tough labor but still caring in a strong way, was disappointed in Jace. He believed that his education was the only way Jace could escape this life, and this notice could result in Jace's expulsion from school. His father confronted him about the test, but when he asked if he cheated, Jace told the truth that the answers just came to him. This of course didn't satisfy Jace's father, who promptly sent him to his room. This frustrated Jace, causing him to jolt out of the apartment before his father could stop him. What his father didn't know was that Jace had been struggling with voices in his head for some time now. As he walked down the street, he could sense the emotions of others. While sitting in class, the most private thoughts of his colleagues became clear voices in his head. Sometimes it became difficult to decipher his own thoughts from those around him. To clear his mind, he climbed to the highest point of his building. Reaching the roof, he could easily see the mana ring spanning over the horizon for miles. Up here, nothing could reach him, not his parents' worries, nor the secret worries of anyone else who came within 50 feet of him. Yet his tranquil moment was disrupted by three of his classmates who had bullied Jace in the past. He heard their thoughts well before he saw their faces. There's the freak, their minds murmured. The largest of the bullies was a boy named Tuck, who had frequently targeted Jace in the past. Next was his sidekick slash minion, Caden. And lastly, their female companion who was a master at manipulating the other boys, Jill. They confronted Jace on the rusted, slanted roof of the building, preventing his escape and forcing him to admit that he was in fact a freak. This admission did not satisfy the bullies, however, and Tuck put a well-placed punch in Jace's stomach. Reeling in pain, he couldn't stop his anger from moving his tongue, and Tuck's mind had already betrayed him. Jace began to describe some of Tuck's worst fears in vivid detail. Everything from his drunk father who frequently beat him, down to Tuck faking sleep in order to avoid his father's wrath. Hearing this being made public caused Tuck to lash out at Jace, pushing him and causing him to topple over the edge. As he hung precariously over the edge, Tuck's eyes stared down furiously at Jace. The only one who even batted an eye at what was going on was Caden, but he was still too much of a coward to stop his much larger comrade. 
As his boot came down upon Jace, a maelstrom of blue and white crackly mana manifested around his eyes and hands. Without much control, Jace entered the mind of Caden, whispering commands to the boy, help me. Then Jace's perspective completely changed. He was looking down at himself. He had taken over the mind of another person. As he stared at himself through another's eyes, he couldn't shake how he appeared so weak and frail. The idea of how people perceived him was troubling, but not as much as the thought of falling to his death. He reached down and pulled himself up from the roof's edge. Jace, now safely on solid footing, walked past the other two bullies without them even touching him. They were in a state of complete shock and fear. The blue mana which filled Caden's eyes faded, and he collapsed. After this event, Jace decided to simply run away from his home. By this time, almost everyone in the area had heard about what transpired. He locked himself in his room, waiting for the cover of darkness to make his escape, but mostly, he wanted to avoid his parents. They had respected his wish to stay in his room for most of the day, but his mother, Rana Balaron, began to worry for her son. Finally, Jace allowed her to enter, and they began to talk about what had happened. Jace went on in detail, and her mother deciphered that her son was in fact a telepath. This knowledge only caused Jace to feel more like an outcast, but his mother assured him that him being a telepath could never change how much she loved him. A few days later, Jace's parents asked him to meet them in the common room. They had arranged a meeting with someone who could help Jace with his powers. As they walked out onto the observation deck, Jace saw him, a sphinx. His name was Alhemorit, an arbiter for the Plain of Vern. It's his job to negotiate an end to the civil war which was constantly ravaging their world. And who better would be suited for a job like that than someone who can read minds? He agreed to take the young mind mage under his wing. It wasn't every day that an apprentice telepath was discovered after all. The two from this point on would only talk through telepathic communication, and after a brief farewell, Jace jumped on the Sphinx's back and flew off to his training. As I said, Al Hamret is a negotiator, one who brokers peace treaties and truces between the faction in power and the rebel forces. Most of Jace's training would come in the form of this actual work. Al Hamret would bring young Jace to council meetings and test his ability to capture secrets from high-ranking officers who would attend. He would also send Jace on scouting missions, using stealth and illusions to capture more secure information from the opposing sides. There was one question though which Jace could never find the answer to. It was in the mind of Al Hamaret, but it was too potent for him to crack. If the Arbiter's job was to end the war peacefully, then why was the war constantly going on? His mentor peered into Jace's mind and found this question to which he replied that it's his job to limit casualties more so than it is to end the war. The war would never end. It was a war which would decide who controlled the precious mana resources, and so, the fighting would never really stop. Since no real peace would ever be obtained, Alhambret used his powers to find their plans and use them at negotiations to find temporary peace. Jace was satisfied with this answer and continued on with his training as usual. One day, Jace was plotting points onto a map, areas of some conflicts which he had stolen from a general. Jace thought to himself, he and his master hadn't tested each other's mental barriers for a while. He was never able to peer into Alhamaret's mind, of course, but this time, he was distracted by the mapping. This was his chance. A flood of sensations, emotions, and memories overtook him. He saw himself in so many forms, and as the wisps of blue mana danced around him, he began to fade. Jace was slipping in between worlds. He could feel his very essence being torn apart. Alhamred turned to his prodigy and yanked his essence back to this world. All Jace could really make from the whole experience was his master uttering the word, Planeswalker. Jace had returned, and Alhamred quickly erased the young mage's mind of what had just happened. While Alhamred was able to clear most of the event, Jace still remembered what he felt and recalled the word, Planeswalker. He didn't really know what to do. His master was lying and wiping his memories. How many times has he done this? Jace left himself a note and forced himself to forget everything, realizing his master would eventually find out. He went on to do missions as normal, but one mission gave Jace more information than Alhamarad intended. He was seeking information from another high general. 
as was their typical routine. But this time, the general's mind remembered something. In his memories, Jace saw himself in front of the man with a bag of gold. He had been selling secrets from the opposing side to the general, while also stealing information from the man to sell to the rebels. Of course, Jace had no gold or memories of this. It must have been the doing of Al Hammerit. It all made sense. Why would an arbiter which makes his living from war want the war to end? Because he really didn't. He was keeping the war going but only slowing its progress. The more information he obtained, the more gold he could gain. This was the truth behind Al Hammerit, and he was now using Jace as a go-between. This time, when Jace returned to his master, Al Hammerit could sense the hostility in Jace's thoughts. Jace played it off as cool as he could, but there was no escaping his feelings. He challenged his master to another mental contest, but his voice couldn't hide his true intentions. He wanted to harm his teacher. Jace knew that he could never match his master in mental prowess, but he did manage to lure him into a trap. He allowed Al Hammerit to enter his mind. The Sphinx was attempting to remove Jace's memories once again, allowing him to keep his valuable puppet. Jace was willing to damage his own mind in order to put his opponent in a state of overconfidence. While he was completely distracted, Jace struck at his master's mind. Jace had forgotten much about his past, but Al Hammerit forgot how to breathe. The stress of the battle caused Jace's Planeswalker Spark to ignite once again, and the last thing he saw of his world was his former master grasping for breath. Jace found himself in the center of a city, but it was unlike any city he had ever seen before. In fact, he couldn't remember any other city, only that this place was not his home world and that everything was very strange. He peered into the minds of those who walked around him. They only thought of the city and nothing outside of it. It was a world called Ravnica. At this point, all he knew was that he was a telepath and that this was not his home world. He traveled for a while before finally discovering information on a place he could stay. There, he would spend his nights tracing illusions in the air, thinking about himself. Eventually, bits of information would come to him. His name. His name was Jace Belleron. But that's all he knew of himself. He had no idea if he was a good or evil person. He would have to find out that bit on his own. So there you go guys, the new lore behind Jace Belleron's origins. From his origins, I assume that his lore stays relatively faithful to his current story. There were a few differences between this new lore and his older story, but really I just think it was a better, more detailed version. Again, you can find his old lore in my previous video linked in the description to compare if you'd like. Since this week's Friday Night Lore episode is Magic Origins related, and the set hasn't even been released yet, the winner of this giveaway will receive a copy of Jace Memory Adept. Remember guys, to enter for your chance to win this card, all you have to do is be a subscriber to this channel and comment on this video. At the end of the week, I'll use a random number generator to select a comment and reveal the winner at the end of next week's FNL episode. So stay tuned to see if you've won. Moving on, let's unveil the winner of last week's giveaway. If you recall, last week's FNL focused on the Dragonlord Ojitai, and so the winner was set to receive a foil Ojitai's command and a copy of Ojitai's Soul of Winter. Without further ado, the winner of last week's FNL and new owner of this foil Ojitai's Command and Ojitai Soul of Winter is... The Happy Guy. Congratulations to the YouTube user The Happy Guy. I'm sure you're a happy guy now. Please, if you could, check your messages on YouTube. There, you should find a message from me regarding all the information I need to send you this card. If you don't find it in your messages, check your spam. The faster you reply to that message, the faster I can send you this card. I hope you all enjoyed this week's FNL episode. This and all FNL giveaways are brought to you by ABU Games, a great online store which can service all of your MTG needs. I really suggest checking them out. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, share, and sub to the channel. It really goes a long way in supporting future content. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.